I had to move my chair into place and send to the frame. Anyways, uh, it is quarter to seven in the morning. It's uh, 6.44, well, six hours and 44 minutes into the day of Saturday, November 28th, uh, 2020, and we are starting the vlog for, uh, with, it's going to prove to be a very long weekend. <laughs> Not long in the sense that it's the third day, but... Uh, the two days will merge into one. Uh, there'll be very little sleep. And that's what, that's, that's what kind of produced Friday. Friday was produced because, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, there was, there really wasn't much sleep. I had pushed myself into a project. And in order to complete the project I needed to complete, uh, well, it's actually two projects, uh, bringing the scooter back. Uh. I ended up uh, overextending myself uh, when I don't leave when I don't when I don't leave a project at a proper point. It falls me into my sleep and leaves a little bit of anxiety that I have to get it done. And it produces a, uh, a restless sleep. I know, but I notice now even even when I'm doing when I am sleeping, uh, my body is still extremely warm. It's like it's, it, 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 It's almost as if my body is kind of smoking. <laughs> it's just sort of, you know, <laughs> you come out from something very hot into a, into a colder environment, and there's the uh, steam and smoke coming off your body. Well, this is the way I wake from my from my from my sleep uh, in terms of uh, coming from uh, my dreams into here. That's kind of the way, in terms of the physiology, that's the way it affects my body. And so I do end up having a, a, a sleep that is very, very, we would call it physically intense. But again, this is not necessarily a bad thing, but it just... Uh, puts you in a point where you're, you're, you're in two places. Um... Particularly if if the the thoughts of the dreams, the events of the dreams haven't left your mind, you know you're still sort of thinking about things, you're mulling things over. Uh, then you're going to be here physically present, but you're not going to be fully attentive because your mind is elsewhere on the things of the dream and. I said, this is a challenge that's put, actually put before Aang, if you look, look at it from the uh, Avatar from uh, La Avatar the Last Airbender. Uh, this is uh, this is his challenge. This is also the challenge uh, that, that the the, uh, uh, the uncle of the Fire Lord. And Zuko has to go through the same challenge. It's, it's a presentation that you have a variety of choices in life. And that you have to choose to walk the path, and then this is this path isn't for everybody. Some people walk it successfully, some people walk it uh, uh, not so successfully. They take them, but to, but they fail. But most people don't walk the path at all. Most people like the uh, well. I'm talking about the liberal left, but uh, the liberal left is actually kind of a mirror image of the religious right uh, because of quantum mechanics. Uh, this is physics. And the uncertainties of the universe presented in, therein, including uh, that 95% of the universe is, not, uh, is dark matter and dark energy, which means the, the absolute maximum noble knowledge we could have about the universe in its entirety is about 5%. So the statements, taking this in, into the context, of there is no God, you're speaking on the certainty that you have a maximum noble knowledge of 5%. Now, if your knowledge is only 5% of what's actually there, do you really have a good feeling that there is no God, or just maybe this is something that's way far, this far beyond you? But what happens, most people will follow these mantras, these, 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 these sayings, without question. 
just in the same manner that the religious right will follow the dictates of the commandments as sheeple uh, without question or, or, or understanding. And I think question is not, you, you, when you question things, this is kind of what makes me a nonconformist, is you don't question things to be obnoxious. You question things to develop an understanding that is not, or is not typically there. Or that you don't have, it's it's it, it, it's a it's a see even the term you know inquisition the, the inquiry is not necessarily a good term because it has a historical context of being something that is nasty. Uh, the inquisition uh, of the Roman Catholic of the Roman Catholic uh, Church. It was in about the 1500 A.D. And uh, it was a nasty bit of inquiry where it involved a lot of torture. <laughs> you know, And of course, at the end, if the person didn't confess, they killed the person. But if they did confess, then they killed, they killed the person anyway. And the logic was, it was like this, is that if the person confessed to their particular sins, you killed them uh, to prevent them from sinning again. You killed them at their best point. Uh, if they refuse to uh, 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 confess their sins that you thought they had, then they're evil and you need to kill them to prevent the evil from spreading. <laughs> so that was the logic of the, the time. And in, in, in a large chunk of the large, that logic is still with us. Uh, the, the left may not understand this. And there are certain people who, uh, you know, the white supremacists and so on, so may not understand this either, but the the blaming of the Jews for all things evil is kind of a, a, a misdirection. What happens is that Jews often act as middlemen. They uh, sort of sit, uh, act as go-between between two different groups. And in this uh, sort of path in life that they've sort of taken, because they were the ones, only ones who could read and write, typically speaking, uh, found them in the positions where they were in, in a, significant amount, a significant amount of power. They were the bureaucracy. They were the deep state. This is why the deep state, state is associated with Israel, why it's associated with the Jews, uh, because this is who they were. But who, if they were the middle people, who was the one at top? Well, primarily a large chunk of the world that we're sitting in today is one of, of the Roman Catholicism. The enemies of Europe in the Western world are the same as it was uh, during the Crusades. Is Russia, England, uh, the England has been completely uh, trounced. It's now been fully brought into the uh, European sphere. There's nothing left of England. So Russia is the only thing that left is Russia. And this is the way it is. It's the same sphere. And so the same people, the Pope, who is at the top of all this, is he is the main source of evil in the world. What happens is that the Jews simply act as a go-between. But most, again, most people don't understand this. Most people don't, won't, will never go that far to understand how these, these mechanisms actually work. They don't unravel them. They simply f float within a sphere of, of, of knowledge and understanding that is dictated to them. They follow along. They are the sheeple. A lot of the Christian right. They're part of the sheeple. They have not removed themselves from the matrix. It's not about red pill or blue pill, because uh, in order to be truly free, and this is the transcendent part that uh, a lot of Hindus understand, and some of the yogis, is that you have to be transcendent without any form of mechanism, in other words, or inducement. It has to be natural, what they call holistic. And you can't do that with, with any form of pill or medication. It has to be something that develops within. Part of your own nature is there, but it has to be nurtured, it has to be grown, it has to be cultivated, it has to be brought up. But in many cases, that's simply not the case. 
Anyways, uh, we've had a long introductory, and uh, let's see what happens over the weekend. for the weekend block. We've been able to do this almost uh, once a week now. So, and remember, put the camera on. That's why I'm speaking. <laughs> the question is, because there is a wind, uh, am I speaking loud enough that you can hear me over the wind? That's the whole issue. And the thing is, is I notice that if I uh, amplify the sound, and it can sort of boost the sound up to, to 200%. Uh, it actually amplifies the sound of the motor, uh, the electric motor. And it kind of gets into the way of... Uh, it gets in the way of uh, the voice. So uh, I just have to know how to speak loud enough. Uh, so that, uh, we can vlog as we ride. I tie myself from door to door at about 13 minutes. Before it was like 20 minutes. Door to door. Now it's uh, 13 minutes. I cut the time by 7 minutes. There's a lot of bright sun today, so I have my visor on, my sun visor. Now, I'm not too sure about riding back. 
Uh, so we'll be staying at my parents' house tonight because uh, I go to church early in the morning. This is part of the weekend, uh, uh, one day week, uh, the one day weekend. <laughs> We're two days more than one. Uh, more than one. Now that I stop, there's no wind. It's, what happens is as you're riding, there is wind. And that's sort of, uh, you, get, you have to compensate for that when you're speaking. I'm very sec comfortable with the second gear now. So, the next question is when do I move up to the third gear, the third and final gear? Well, I'll give it another couple weeks. No tar Now it stop no wind, so the bike definitely the the ride the, the speed definitely does create a, a, a good degree of headwind. The question is now is that uh, whether or not uh, you can hear me. So this is I think this is good for a weekend vlog. I think this is uh, riding is always something is still something new to me. Uh, there's still a learning curve to go ahead ahead. So this. Uh, riding constitutes the walk. Remember that divot there? Still haven't fixed it, but anyway.
wind is gone.